Okay, uh, cheers guys for coming. I'm here with uh, Chris Greenslade and Joe Gascoigne, uh, two of the new players that we've signed uh, as part of uh, our new team this season. So we're doing these interviews so that the fans can learn a bit more about you, because um, a lot of them won't have seen you around in other bits of football. Um, so basically, we'll just start with your histories. Joe, what, what's your footballing story? Yeah, so I started at Heacham when I was about five, um, then joined Norwich at 10, till 16, um, went to Kings Lynn at 16, uh, played through the 18s, reserves, <clears throat> then was lucky enough to sign a pro deal there, went full-time at Kings Lynn, didn't get my deal renewed in the summer and then now I'm at, at Deerham, yeah. Excellent. Chris? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, so I started my football career, I suppose, at, well, I was born in Wyndham, so started playing for Wyndham. Uh, similarly to Joe, joined Norwich at 13. Um, was there till I was 15 and then was signed by Colchester, uh, released at Colchester at 16. Um, and then I met Toasty and Lee from PB and Deza. Started playing for PB, um, start, then went on to play for Deza. Um, then went on to play for the first team here for a, um, for a season just off and on really. Nothing too, not too, not too involved I would say. Um, Went on, moved around a little bit, played for DIS, and then I moved to London, played a couple of years in uh, the Essex Senior Leagues, um, and then uh, moved back a couple of years ago, and this is the first first real year back playing full-time, I would say. So, yeah, a bit like Joe, just started about a bit, and, and found, uh, when Toasty came here, he asked me to come over here, so. Excellent, so you got, you started off in quite similar places, both in the Norwich Academy and everything. Um, <laughs> So, but then you had different career, different paths. You obviously went to London and you went through Kings Lynn. Joe, you actually made your debut in the Kings Lynn first team, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, I think I was 19. Mm -hmm. uh, Altrincham at home. 1-2-0, didn't you? Yeah, 1-2-0, yeah. Started in the mid middle of the pitch, centre yeah. mid. Um, yeah, it was in the COVID season. Mm -hmm. So there's a few lads that were on furlough. Um, yeah, got the call up. And uh, yeah, started my first game and my debut. Yeah. Nice one. And he's played the whole 90 minutes? Did you? No, I came off at uh, 60th minute. My legs were absolutely gone. <laughs> <laughs> Shot a bit. <laughs> yeah, so I was happy to come off. But yeah, no, good experience. How did you find first team football? Because uh, that, was that um, step two or step one? Would that, be? that was step one, yeah. Step nationally. one. Yeah, very quick. Very yeah. quick, yeah. My legs felt it at the 60th minute, definitely. And as, as physical as this league or different or more, well, obviously more technical, but... Yeah, I think <clears throat> this one's probably more physical in terms of physical contact, but... Mm -hmm. Step one is so fast on the ball, how yeah. quick it shifts. And if you don't shift quick enough, you're punished straight away. Yeah. Um, that's probably the main difference, yeah. yeah. So you mentioned you played in the middle of the park there, uh, mm. just so the fans know a bit about you. I mean, we've seen you, we've all seen you both playing uh, this season, but uh, where, where do you, would you both put your best position, Chris? Where would you think you, you play best? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I grew, grew up playing centre-half, mm -hmm. um, but obviously my height has not really led me to be a fortuitous <laughs> centre-half moving forward. So uh, I'm quite happy to play anywhere across the back line. Uh, yeah. Probably full-back is where I, where I see myself moving forward. Yeah. Um, but like I say, I'm happy to do a shift for the team wherever. Um, yeah, because we've seen you darting up the wing a few times and putting some decent balls in as well, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I love a mazy run. Uh, yeah. get a bit of a nosebleed <laughs> over the halfway line. But um, no, I, I mean, I'm, uh, I consider myself more of a team player than anything else. Um, yeah. Quite happy to be, quite happy to go wherever I'm needed, really, uh, yeah. wherever suits the team best. But like I say, I do love a mazy from fullback. So. Yeah, well, you've been described as a beast and a winner by other, t other teams who've signed you before. Um, um, yeah, I mean... Is that, is, that, is that something to do with your style of play? Maybe, do you maybe like to get so. stuck in? Maybe so. I mean, I've always been, I've always been quite into um, like the fitness stuff off the pitch. Um, so I think maybe that's where the B stuff comes from. And then obviously when I was when I was at Desa, I was part of the first Desa group that came through and was fortunate enough to be captain of the side that went to the um, the National Cup final. Um, so I think yeah, I've always had a bit of an attitude around the changing room um, in that sense. And I tried. Try. I think potentially off, I offer a bit in the changing room as well, which has probably given me that name, I would say. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think um, it's an, certainly a nice thing to be called, I suppose. Um, so, uh, so well, yeah. I, was quite, I was quite surprised when I saw it on social media because I sat next to you on the way to Daventry all the mm. way there, pretty much. I thought, beast, this guy's like the nicest guy, in, <laughs> nicest guy in football. All he wanted to do was offer me drinks and get me bottles of water all the way there and everything. But but Joe, less less beast mode in your game, I think, isn't there? What, yeah. where, where do you think your uh, best position is? Where do you prefer playing? And what sort of style of play do you 
prefer? I'd say probably attacking midfield. Yeah. Yeah. Um, quite a pretty footballer, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say. Um, yeah, I'd like to be on the ball, create things. Um, yeah, I'd say higher up the pitch is probably where I'm best. But like Chris, I can play multiple positions, to be fair. Mm -hmm. A bit deeper. Um, yeah, just like being on the ball, bit of a ball playing midfielder, really. Yeah, do, be, do you prefer being through the middle or out wide? Or? Yeah, through the middle. Um, I haven't really got the pace to, to go out wide. <laughs> <laughs> Can't run past anyone, but yeah, yeah, in the middle of the pitch. Yeah, How are you finding the, in the middle of the pitch in this league? I know you said it was more physical than even step one uh, that you said. How yeah. are you finding in the middle of the pitch? Because we, we spoke just before this interview started about the, uh, was it the Gresley and the uh, Spalding midfielders, the big beasts they had in the middle there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you finding uh, playing at this level? Yeah, no, this? yeah, it's a different challenge. Yeah. Um, but I think it's good. I think it's good for me. It's something I need to learn to use my body, yeah. use my body more. Um, but I've always been quite good at finding space away from people, mm -hmm. so I can avoid that physical contact. Um, but I'm using it more in this league, which is good. Yeah, it's good. So in, um, regarding the squad now, because we want to talk about you know Deerham Town as a whole was while we're here. Um, what do you think the main strengths of the squad are at the moment? Uh, what positions are we strong at? Or do you want to? Or do you want me to go? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one of the big squad, uh, one of the big strengths of the squad at the moment is probably the morale we have around the change room. I think all in all, having been thrown together so late on in pre-season, actually yeah. not really having much of a pre-season at all. I think it's really been good to see how we all get on. Um, obviously, as we've spoken about before, there's been a few team issues leading up to where we are now. But certainly, I think. Even with new players coming in now, they're gelling, gelling with the team pretty much straight away. And I think it's fair to say that uh, the spirit of the changing room is getting there. Absolutely. I think, um, and, you know, we are showing in some games now that we are we are performing because of the relationships and the morale and the, and the feeling that we have around the changing room, which is great. We know we've got the quality to be a good step four side in this league. Absolutely. I think we all believe that. Um, and it's just getting the the attitude and the morale in the changing room to really match up with that and I think we're almost there um with regards to you know what we need in the squad I think most certainly it's just goals I think yeah. I think all it's not it's not uh it's not impossible to see that you yeah, know you we, can't we, hide that fact either can you no you exactly know. exactly and I think I think that would really take us to being a team that sits in for 13th and 14th to you know Eighth, ninth, tenth, maybe pushing for playoffs, and I think mm -hmm. we all believe we can be there. Um, definitely, we, you know, we have the players in the squad to score goals. It's just getting, getting them in the right places and getting them in the service, and potentially, um, you know, maybe we need to bring one or two in. I don't know. Uh, yeah. That's for Toasty to decide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that's probably where we're lacking most at the moment. But, but your camaraderie, do you think, um, with the physicality of the league? I know we keep talking about the physicality, but. Um, early in the game, early in the season, the, the squad was pushed mm. around a little bit. Do you think is that that dressing room atmosphere, that sort of brotherhood, has sort of mm. helps in that sort of physical game? Yeah, I think 100. percent I mean, is, is that was that where the squads improved? Where we backing each other up and? Yeah, I would say. I mean, we we were lucky enough to really because we had a, obviously a core group of players come having played together before. I think it's really easy to build off of that then. If you've got five, six, seven, eight players that already know each other, then some of the newer lads like myself, like Joe, we can really buy into that and, and become part of that group, which I think we've definitely seen progress um, over over the first half, first third of the season or so. Uh, with players coming in and coming out, obviously that it, it is football. It's step four football. People want to be here. Some people potentially don't quite meet the mark for whatever reason. So there's always going to be changes. Um, and I think you become... And Joe will know, and, and having been involved in football long enough now, you know that things change on a weekly basis sometimes. And that, that some, becomes something you're used to, I think. So um, it's good to see that the new players coming in are obviously aware of that and are buying into what we're trying to do here. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's going to be an integral part of how we continue to move the team forward this season and into the next and seasons beyond. And also we've got Deezer providing good quality players. Mm. Into, you're, obviously, you've mentioned you were yeah. part of the Deza system yourself as well. Um, we've got people like Dano, Charlie, Kai and, mm. and, and Joe Ryder in goal today who's, yeah. who've come through that system. Um, do you think the quality of the players we're getting through now are, are better and, and constantly evolving and getting stronger? 
I would say so. I mean, I, I think th what Deza has benefited from primarily is being able to put players into this environment. Mm -hmm. And the players, you know, you've seen it in players gone by Ashton going on to sign a pro deal. Yeah. A couple of the, obviously, Fraser Blake Tracy was mm -hmm. the guy from my year that's gone on to do so. So I think uh, it's a fortuitous relationship from both sides, really. Um, and certainly, we as a team now are seeing that our strength and depth is coming a lot from the Deza side. And yeah. the players that are stepping up are really doing a good job. Yeah, because we look at, I look at the team we play against and there isn't three or four 17 year olds no. in their side is there you know uh, they, these are seasoned big strong footballers mm. aren't they experienced non-league footballers uh, so how do you think the diesel lads have uh, come, on to, come into this season do you think they've mm, I th they look like step four footballers already to us well this is it I mean I think you can only judge them on the performances they put in on the pitch right yeah. um, and certainly you know all of the lads that have been involved are involved for a reason, first and foremost. But secondly, they're doing enough to stay involved with the squad on a week to week basis. Yeah. There are some that we haven't seen yet that are involved with training with us. And, you know, they're really starting to find their feet as well. So I think it's, a, it's an exciting thing to have an academy set up in the way that we have here. Um, and it's certainly good for us to have players to come and fit in around us, but also to keep pushing us forward. I think what, when, a, when a team starts to struggle is when people start to feel like the position is theirs. Um, like you always need to have someone behind you really pushing you on. Um, and that's something that's evolving in this squad as well, certainly, because obviously when you throw a team together at last minute, you're not going to have a squad of 20 that are all good enough to play necessarily. Did you feel we had that through the Norwich Academy, both of you? Uh, when you when you were both part of the Norwich Academy, did you feel that there was a, a, an avenue straight into men's football there? Or do you think Deezer is slightly ahead in that? I think he is ahead. Um, I think you probably agree, in the academy, you're very in an academy bubble. Yeah. And we actually had a chat earlier, didn't we, that the academy football is very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. So it's played really nicely, you play out from the back. Yeah. And coming into men's football, it's a lot different. Yeah. And I think a few of the young lads have found that. But that's why it's so good, because they have that pathway into the men's football. Yeah. Um, so they learn it early. I mean, I don't know how old Kai is, but... 19. There you go. Dano 17 as well. There you, go. there you go. Coming straight into football. And they've got such a long career ahead of them. Yeah. They're already used to it, yeah. um, which I think helped me playing men's football at 16. Yeah. Um, you're used to it from so early. So, so you, you played at men, you, as a 16 year old, were you at Kings Lynn by then? Yeah. So yeah. I got released from Norwich at 15, but at under 16s. Um, so I went to Kings Lynn, played Kings Lynn Reserves at 16. Yeah. Um, that was men's football, Thurlow Nunn. So, Senior yeah. Cup football as well, did you play in that? Uh, yeah, I probably would have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't say I remember. It's been years ago. <laughs> Memory's lacking, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Men's football, so fellow none. Um, but yeah, yeah. So you started off at Norwich City, like you say. You then went to Kings Lynn, mm -hmm. uh, and now you're at Durham Town. How does it feel now to be finally arriving at Norfolk's best club? Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm loving it. Um, I'm really enjoying my football. Um, I said to Toasty in the summer when I was coming over here, that was the main thing for me to come and enjoy football. And yeah. ever since I've been here. Yeah, I'm loving it. And I think it helps, like we were saying earlier, with the group that I'm around. Um, it's made it a lot easier. Well, that's, what, that's a good link, actually, because my next question was going to be what drew you both specifically mm. to want to come and play here? Because we, we all know what happened in pre-season and the, the changes in the term. You would have got like, quite a short notice. Were, were, you, were you each already speaking to other clubs pre-season before you decide on Durham? And, yeah, and yeah. if so, what, what made you want to come to Durham? Yeah, so I was speaking to a few other clubs before. Um, then Toasty rang me, bubbly as ever. Um, yeah, telling me he wanted me to come over. Yeah. Um, came and gave it a go, Mole Barton away. Mm -hmm. I played, um, yeah. just loved it, just loved it. He put the trust in me and just said, I want you to go and enjoy playing football. Yeah. That was the main thing for me. Um, I knew I was going to do it here. And yeah. since I've been here, I've, yeah, I've loved it. So I think I made the right choice, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you have. Because I, I remember you, uh, <coughs> in the Roxham game when we finally got all those pictures of all the players coming through on Twitter. We couldn't make out who was who. And uh, when Henry Clark scored in that Roxham game, everyone was shouting, great goal, Gaza, because we thought it was you. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> but this, this is important as to why we, do, uh, why we do interviews like this as well, so people can put a face to, face to a name and everything. So, Chris, what, uh, where were you looking at going uh, pre-season what, what, and what made you want to come back to Durham? Yeah, I think I, I was fortunate enough to be talking to a few clubs again. I was probably going to find myself at... Uh, uh, 
step five club um, I've been training with Thetford so it's great to see them doing so well at the moment which is which is awesome but um, yeah I think Toasty really was the uh, residing factor as to why I came back here obviously having played with uh, for him yeah, a few a lot years of ago for the club, isn't it? Yeah. absolutely I think there is you know Toasty and Lee have done an amazing job at the club to obviously set up Desert and get it to where it is now um, and I think it it's almost gone full circle really because I remember sitting in the um, the office six or seven years ago now so, and Toasty saying that eventually one day he wanted this job and now he's got it so it's amazing to be here with him and obviously with Lee as director of football now as well and Paul's been a great addition to the side and just really come and give my all for the club and see if we can we can help obviously to keep it in step four this year and see if we can move it, move it forward in the years to come. Yeah because I said downstairs to you this is exactly what the fans want I mean we we entered this season, unlike last season, not thinking about promotion, not mm. thinking about anything else other than really staying in step four. A lot of us talked about mid-table, like we mentioned yeah. downstairs, that we think we're good enough for that. Um, but if if we kept the squad as we have now, uh, what sort of, where, where would you expect us to finish, both of you, uh, expectations? I mean, the expectation in the changing room for us and from Toasty is certainly we want to be, a, a, you know, we believe we've got the ability in the squad this year to push for a playoff, a playoff position. Mm -hmm. We know we've got the quality to do that. We just need to put the performances in on a week-to-week -week basis. Yeah. And I think some of that is maybe a bit of step four experience. We're, certainly, if you look around the dressing room, there's not all of the players haven't had that level of experience for long periods of time but we're developing that now and you, I think you know our performances are getting there and the quality we're starting to show that a bit more like St. Neitz away for example um, so yeah, I think ultimately as we said downstairs it's difficult for us to sit here and say we're only thinking about not going down because as a player, your expectation is we want to win every game. Yeah, I wouldn't want a player to think Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a difference between fans and players' of course, expectations. Of course. Yeah. yeah, so I think, you know, we're, we're fully aware of the situation that occurred before the start of the year and we're fully aware of, you know, what the, the minimum expectation for this club is. And deerham has been a step forward club now. You can probably tell me longer, um, better than I, but it's been for a long time. Yeah. Um, and it's been one of the premier clubs in Norfolk and it certainly deserves to be there. And, it, you know, there's no reason for it to move away from that. Yeah. Um, and we as players, we understand that expectation. But of course, as I say, when we're challenging sides that we look at in the table that are now second, third, fifth, sixth, you know, we feel like we can get there. And it's frustrating sometimes, I think, with, with the results and obviously... Um, but that's just something for us to improve on and something for us as players to do better on the pitch and move us forward. Excellent. And Joe, same question. I've heard Chris say that you are now at, agreeing with me, you are now at the Premier Norfolk <laughs> Club. Uh, where, do you, where do you see us this season? Yeah, no, I think it's exactly what Chris said. Yeah. I think we can be up there. Um, I think it's just consistency. That's a massive thing. Yeah. Um, we're quite up and down at the minute. We'll have a really good performance. They're not so good. If we can stay consistent, I think we'll pick up so many more points yeah. um, and we'll really start going up the league. And like Chris said, we've got the quality. We have yeah. got the quality in there. I think you can see it as well. Um, some of the performances we've put in warrant more points, yeah. um, but got to score goals to win Fine games. Fine lines, isn't it, football? Got to score you know. goals to win games. Yeah. So, yeah. So finally then, um, is there a message you want to give to the fans before we go? So I'll stop you, Chris, being our third string drummer. Yes. Wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully you won't Not see Ross too Bellum, much. But, yeah. But. <laughs> Ho hopefully you won't see too much more of me drumming this year. <laughs> I know I've uh, picked up a few suspensions already. So yeah. uh, no, uh, obviously um, we want to do the fans justice in terms of what we what they're seeing on the pitch, yeah. um, and we really appreciate the support all over the place. I mean, I can't say I've played at a club that gets the following that that oh. Deerham does to you know the the traveling is is a lot this year yeah, um, exciting, yeah. and for us as players i mean it's certain uh, you know we have to be there for you guys to come and support us i mean it drives spurs us on so much and obviously we only want to give to you the results that you want to see um so i think my message to the fans would be stick with us we're getting there um, um you know we we believe that we're going to be a solid step four side this year and for the years to come and that's that's the only thing that you know that's what we have to prove to you on the pitch yeah brilliant message joe yeah i couldn't put it any better myself chris so <laughs> so well spoken mate yeah no stick with us um we'll get there we've got the quality like i said mm -hmm. keep supporting we really appreciate it yeah and we all agree that this is the premier place to be so the fans we all agree we want more fans <laughs> to come and watch don't we <laughs> yeah we do yeah brilliant joe chris thanks very much for for doing thank this you. Yeah. thank you cheers